Buenas tardes y bienvenidas a esta sesión del Centro de Compasión. Esta sesión será interpretada del inglés al español a medio de una línea telefónica. Para acceder a nuestra línea de interpretación, favor de llamar al 978-990-5357 y marque el código de acceso 391-822 y el símbolo de número cuando se le pida. Por favor, mantenga su micrófono en mudo en la línea telefónica. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the, this session of the Compassion Center. This session will be interpreted from Spanish to English. And to access our interpretation phone line, please dial 978-990-5357 and dial the access code 391-822, pound sign when prompted. Please keep your microphone on mute to avoid background noise. Thank you. Gracias. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Nada, for um, being here on our Compassion Centers and allowing us to share this work with as broad a community and our partners and our and all of our families um, throughout our county. And, hopefully nationally and internationally. So thank you for making that possible. Um, I'm very honored today um, as we are coming to the end of our Suicide Prevention Month to have my friend, um, SBRN trainer, co-founder of the uh, Santa Barbara Response Network here to speak with us today about his own personal journey and the experiences that he's had in his own life that he wants to share. And we all know that we learn from those who have lived through experience. We know that we can get through the other side, but when Anthony shares his story of what helped him and what got him through his journey, we're hoping that it will also touch the lives of people who may be struggling. And there are many people, as we know, struggling right now. This offering is uh, coming to you from the Santa Barbara Response Network. We're available to you 24 seven in English and Spanish to help you. And um, we'll be putting our number up and reminding you that you're not alone and that there is help. So I'll introduce Anthony. Anthony Rodriguez, um, I call him a mental health advocate, a fierce advocate for mental health. He's uh, now currently with the Food Bank of Santa Barbara, but he is um, a core member of the Santa Barbara Response Network and has been speaking um, in many locations about his experiences um, with his own journey of recovery through um, suicide attempts. So we wanted to share um, a few minutes with Anthony and then we're going to show uh, a film that Anthony was part of where he is telling his story. So we um, were very pleased to be able to um, share that with the Santa Barbara community on this uh, Compassion Center. So welcome, Anthony. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here. I know this is very important. Many people have asked us to have this program and to have you share your story and your film, which by the way, you can share on YouTube after this event. So it's going to be up there permanently mm -hmm. and translated into Spanish now. So yeah. Anthony, sitting here with you before we show the film, mm -hmm. what feelings are going on in your mind, in your heart? What What's going on for you right now? Well, right, we now? <laughs> um, right now, I guess it's just you know, just being grateful for um, having the opportunity to be able to share my story. Um, I do want to say thank you to Sasha Gay Lewis, who is the producer and the director of the documentary. Um, the first time that I saw the film, I couldn't even believe um, that it was my story. Um, you know, it was, uh, I never saw my life in the way that she saw my life and the way that she portrayed it, which was you know, all true, but in a positive way in hopes to help save lives from suicide. 
um, you know, and, and I really hope that um, people will ask questions after the film uh, because that's what I want to get out of this is for people to ask the questions that are very difficult to ask and um, not to be afraid, um, you know, no judgment here. And um, I do want to uh, thank also Naira and Sachi, um, you know, Naira being able to, um, you know, do the interpretation for this, which is really huge for me. Um, you know, it's, I'm very truly grateful for it. So um, I'm very honored to be here. And, um, you know, I hope that my struggles and my experiences will, you know, be able to empower somebody else um, because, you know, it's okay not to be okay. And um, there's nothing wrong with it. We're human beings. Um, we all have pain. We all have happiness. We all have many different feelings. And whatever it is that you feel, it's okay. But know that you're never alone. And that's, you know, we're, we're focusing so much on mental health because with the pandemic and everything else that's going on, you're seeing firsthand some of the struggles. I mean, you're getting the calls, you're doing some responses. Um, just wondering what you're seeing and what you want to share with the community about um, what's going on right now and, and how, how we might be able to help others. Um, you know, you know, never did, I don't think any of us ever thought that we would be in the middle of a pandemic, um, you know, but it is and it's a learning curve. Um, for everyone. Um, but, you know, just be aware that we're, we're all in this together and we have to do this together. Um, you know, I understand that we have verbiage like social distancing and physical distancing. I like to use physical distancing because I don't want anybody to be socially distanced. I want you to communicate with each other, talk to each other, uh, reach out to somebody that may be in quarantine by themselves or, you know, the seniors. Reach out, just say hi. Um, you know, ride your bike, you know, for another house and yell and scream and say hi. I mean, just taking that little bit of time makes a big difference and it could save a life. Um, you know, just be, be comfortable with yourself. Right now is a perfect time to take advantage of, of self-care. Um, get to know yourself, get to know, you know, the things that don't work for you, the things that may work for you. Um, but know that it's, you are important. Each and every single one of us is important and we're here for a reason. And sometimes we don't figure out that reason, which I still haven't figured it out, but um, you know, I'm just glad that I'm here. And I do want to thank my mom and my aunts for everything that they've done and they still do. And, you know, they haven't left me alone no matter how bad I was before, but I just wanted to say thanks. I don't think I've said that publicly. And I did want to say thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you, Anthony. And I know you, I mean, you said you hadn't found what you, your purpose or whatever your, you know, a destiny, but you're living in the moment and you're responding to what comes your way each moment. And that's what we can all do is just be there and be present and calm for those who are in the middle of a storm. And we all are in the middle of a storm, but you provide that that safety and that and that's what we've been trying to do with the Santa Barbara Response Network both you and I and all our volunteers is provide that safety net and that calm center where people can talk about where they're at without judgment and be supported and and that's there there is that that people can turn to so so with that I thought we could um, like introduce the st your story and show it to um, our viewers. And um, is there anything you'd like to say in the way of an introduction um, to the film? The film was produced and um, you know directed by Sasha Gay Lewis, which has been an amazing part of my life. Um, this is her first film with me. Um, it's called Surviving Suicide, and um, she does have a second film, which is called Ebb and Flow. Um, which also continues a story of during a time that was very difficult for me when I lost my aunt in 2014. Um, so, you know, I hope you enjoy the, the film. Uh, please have some questions for me. I'm happy to answer them because I want this conversation to be an honest and open conversation um, because that's just the way that it needs to be. 
And if I have to put myself out there, then I'm happy to do that as long as you guys get something out of it. So just with that, I'll let Sashi take over. Thank you, Anthony. So. Thank you. Each of these pinwheels are symbolizing a child that has been abused or neglected from a family or just anyone in general. We need to bring awareness to that, to this cause, because there's so many kids that die at the hands of their parents and um, they never get seen or they never get hurt. childhood was uh there's a lot of it that i don't remember because there was a lot that had happened um my mother was a hard worker um, my dad was uh unfortunately an alcoholic and and a drug user um, but he was my dad my dad was everything to me um, at the age of five i lost my father um he had a heart attack in front of me and um Ever since then, things have been very off and awkward. Um, I was molested, started was starting to be molested by a family member um, that year, and which lasted for many years. Because of the abuse, um, I was rebelling. I got jumped into a gang at the age of 12. Um, and I was seeing a lot of people die and because it was still happening to me because I thought it was, you know, you're supposed to be a man, you're not, you're supposed to be able to handle this. I'm not letting anybody touch you, but it wasn't that easy. And so my first attempt, I attempted uh, to overdose. I took, um, I was doing, I did cocaine and I did meth at the same time, uh, hoping that my heart would stop. Got put into a psychiatric ward um, three times actually. Um, and I was the first time I was there. I don't remember much because they had um, knocked me out with Thorazine because um, I didn't want to be there. I needed to be. <laughs> I needed to be dead. I didn't belong there. I mean, I wasn't. I didn't think I was crazy or anything. I mean, there was something happening, but nobody was listening. Okay, I'll come over there in a minute. Okay, bye bye. Biggest risk factor for suicide is being male. All over the world, more men die by suicide than women. Here in the United States, about four to five times as many men as women, because women attempt more, but men die by suicide more. So you really want to die, or did you just want to stop? At that time, I think I thought that it would be better. That's the only way that I was able to stop the pain. Um, now looking back at it, that it, yeah, that was, I just wanted everything to stop. I wanted him to stop leaving. I wanted him to leave me alone. I wanted to change, but I didn't know how. I was supposed to die. I didn't deserve to live. I didn't think I was worth it. I thought I was worthless, and, and that's why things were happening to me, you know. That's why I was being molested, because I wasn't, I was nothing, and I felt disgusting. They're feeling an unbearable psychological pain that they're desperate to get out of without a lot of tolerance for pain, and without any good healthy strategies for calming down the pain. I still had many thoughts in my head till probably about the age of 24. Um, I struggled a lot. I pretty much tried to keep to myself, or if I wasn't by myself, I would try to be with as many people as possible, because um, I still didn't know what I wanted to do, whether to live or die. I tried my best to drink myself to not even thinking, and who knows what would happen, but. but I decided to live when I met my wife, Bianca. She gave me the courage to live. I appreciated the way that she was with me. She was very gentle, very kind. And, I didn't have to pretend or, or, or be somebody that I wasn't. I was able to tell her the truth about everything that had happened to me. And, and I think that helped so much because she had been somewhat of a, a different position or kind of similar position to what I was. And, and then 
and I didn't have to hide anything anymore. His past really didn't come up until a little bit after we were we were dating. Um, him kind of being from LA, I kind of knew that there had to be somewhat of a rough background. Um, but then after once I found out, you know, what he had gone through with the trauma of um, abuse and all that, uh, I was kind of able to relate to him since I was abused when I was younger and eventually I was also raped and stuff and I, I too tried to take my life. So I knew, you know, where he was at at that point in his life. So um, it really wasn't something that I felt like Oh, he did that. I can't. I can't be with him. It was more like we kind of knew where we were both coming from, so it was easier to understand him and his flaws. Is he an inspiration to me? Uh, definitely. Um, how? Uh, he's just. He's just like um, balls to the walls. It's like he doesn't care. Like he put him anywhere, put him in front of anything, and it's like he'll do it. it you know, he doesn't. He doesn't have fear of anything. It seems like he's just. You know, if it's all for the greater good of you know, of kids out there, then you know he's he's aboard. April is Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. El mes de abril es el mes de la prevención de, de abuso a los niños. And it's something that I hold very dear to my heart to protect a child. As I used to be a victim many years ago, I refused to be silent no more, and now I'm a survivor. I can't honestly pinpoint a, 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 an exact trigger that sets it off, I can't. But it just sometimes it is when I when I start thinking about certain things, um, especially when it becomes with abuse or, or getting ready to give my testimony. Every time I try to give my testimony, I do. There is a lot of triggers with that. It brings it does bring back a lot. It is scary, but I know I have support, and I know that I'm not alone anymore. I don't feel alone anymore. And with that, it's given me a lot of strength to overcome a lot of the things that I've had to deal with. I'm proud to present this proclamation to Anthony Rodriguez. Uh, people may not know, he's also recognized by the Santa Barbara Independent as a local hero for all the work you do for our children. I just want you to know that, you know, that you're everything I could have wished for. And just know that you are very strong. And you're my hero. I love you. Me too. Life is good and life can be good. Just give yourself a second chance. Now, uh, now I can actually say I'm a survivor. And that feels pretty dang good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Wow. Take a minute to, to let that in. Yeah. How do you feel watching that? Um, I just can't believe that I'm still here. You know, um, never did I ever think that I would be good enough to do anything or be anybody. Um, as you know, I was always told not by my family, but by others that I wasn't good enough, uh, that I was better off dead um, since I was always into trouble and, and getting into trouble. Um, I never believed in myself. Um, I hated myself so much, uh, especially during the abuse and even after the abuse. It, um, you know, it never goes away, um, but 
you know, having the support of others, um, it, it helps so much. And, it, it, you know, sometimes when I get down still, um, you know, my wife, she's funny. She's, uh, um, she says, oh, local heroes don't do that. You know, you're gonna get in trouble. People are gonna be talking about you. And she knows that, you know, I, I don't wanna do nothing bad. I wanna make sure that, you know, for my 65 godchildren, I wanna make sure that I'm a good example, um, you know, and I wanna be there as long as I can. Uh, for my family, my mom, my aunts, and, and, you know, for all our godchildren. And so looking at this, it just, I, sometimes I can't even believe it. I have to ask sometimes my family if I really did those bad things or, you know, I really, all that thing, you know, all those things happened to me. But I never forget because as soon as I take off my shirt, I have my scars from my, from being stabbed, from being shot. Um, so I never forget where I came from. But I think that if I didn't go through the things that I did, I probably wouldn't be as, you know, I try to be understanding, compassionate, um, you know, open ears, listen, um, because I never had that and um, without judgment. So I think that's really important for people to know that, um, you know, we're no one to judge. You know, we, we all have bad days and you know, we're, we're human beings, like I said, and it's just, if you're going to be there for somebody, genuinely be there, listen, not just hear. And I know that a lot of us, we hear a lot, but we just really don't pay attention and that doesn't help. But really listen to somebody and you'll be amazed at what you can learn by just listening. Um, and, you know, it's hard. Suicide, the topic's hard. Um, you know, I was talking to Bianca, then I realized that I attempted more than three times. I just never took it as an attempt because it wasn't bad, or at least I didn't think it was that bad. Um, so excuse me, <laughs> it's starting going off. Um, but I think it's really important for, for us to realize that it's, it takes a lot to talk about suicide, but if we don't talk about it, then we'll never uh, be able to stop suicide. So we need to talk about it and bring it out. And, and let people know that it's okay to talk about it. Yeah, that's so important. That's really the first step. And uh, it's interesting when you said that you probably attempted more times than you thought is I think that many people are involved in behaviors right now that are numbing, that are addictive, that are ways to um, turn away from the pain. And, um, and it's difficult for us to go into the pain by ourselves. And I don't recommend that. But I do think we have to honor that we're in pain. We have to start there and say, I'm hurting. But as Anthony, and you can see in his face and in the people on this call, that there are people who will listen without judgment to whatever your pain is that you're experiencing. And it takes courage, like Anthony did, to reach out. But we want you here. We want you here tomorrow. And we want you here later today. Um, like Anthony said, your life is valuable. Um, his life is an example of someone who wanted to throw it away. And there's so many attempt survivors who just didn't want to live anymore and look at where he is today. So that's, that's really the hope that we're looking for. You do get through to the other side. Nothing is permanent. This pain is not permanent. And their pain is there for a reason. So let's find out. Let's help you get through it. So, um, so Anthony, thank you for um, being here. Thank you for your story. We'll keep sharing it. We'll keep talking. Mm -hmm. We'll keep um, inviting people to our walks, our virtual walks in October, the 21st and the 24th. Yep. And uh, I got my birthday. So it's uh, the Santa Barbara Out of the Darkness experience this year. It'll be October 24th, 9 a.m. Register, it's free. Um, you know, the more people that we have, the stronger we will become um, and people will know that they're not alone. So please register, um, show your support for, um, you know, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention's Out of the Darkness Experience this year. It's a virtual experience, um, but what better way to spread more, more, you know, communication, openness, um, no judgment. We've got to get rid of that stigma on when it comes to suicide. So we also need to make sure that suicide is not an option. And if you don't know what to do, if somebody comes up to you and talks to you about it, you don't know what to do, be honest. Let them know you don't know what to do, but also let them know that you guys are gonna get through it together. And honestly, that's what helped me is that 
when I finally said something, the only thing my wife said is like, I, I don't know what to do with you, but we'll figure this out together. And I was just blown away um, because I never had that, truly had that without somebody telling me, oh, I told you so, or whatever the situation might be. But that's what everybody needs. And some people need is just be there, listen, don't judge, don't lie. If you don't know what to do, it's okay. But you guys can figure it out together. So um, please keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, this will be available on YouTube with all our other compassion centers that we've been sharing since the pandemic in English and Spanish. Um, the website sbresponsenetwork.org. If you need help on the national level, the Suicide Lifeline 1-800-273-TALK, which is 8255. And SBRN is there for you also. So thank you all. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Naira, for um, interpreting. Anthony for speaking. Sachi for being here with us as our technical person. And have a wonderful evening. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Take care.